Thank you very much, uh, Mercedes and, and everybody. And what a, what a real privilege um, to be invited um, to give your um, in inspiring learning uh, New Year lecture. And, um, you know, with a title like, like that, I feel the pressure is, is on. So, um, yes, and thank you, Mercedes, for, for picking up on those two words, the response and responsibility. And this idea of responsibility is really important for me in terms of thinking about um, our role as educators in a sustainable future. So this talk is going to take you on a, on a bit of a journey. It's going to start by asking about whether education is the answer. And it's going to lead you through some different approaches and ways of thinking about education for sustainable development through to a call to action. So firstly, is education the answer? Well, it's really easy to glibly always say education is the answer. It's seen as the answer to everything. But is it? Or do we need to think about how we do education differently? So here's a quotation, one of my favourite quotes from um, David Orr, who's been working in this area, um, writing since the 1990s. And he writes, it is worth noting that the destruction of the planet is not the work of ignorant people. Rather, it is largely the results of work by peoples with BAs, BSEs, LLBs, etc. Education can equip people to be more effective vandals of the earth. If one listens carefully, it may even be possible to hear the creation groan every year in late May when another batch of smart degree holding but ecologically illiterate homo sapiens who are eager to succeed are launched into the biosphere. And that for me really highlights what can be the problem with our education systems as they are. And David Orr goes on to say in some later writing, the truth is that without significant precautions, education can equip people to be more effective vandals of the earth. And so we know that our graduates now, they, they, they are simply cogs into an already unsustainable system. We know the system is unsustainable and we fire our graduates into that. But equally, Many of our students come to our universities because they want better jobs, they want to earn more. And yet there's a relationship between the wealth of individuals and their environmental impact. There was some research by Oxfam um, a couple of um, years ago now, which highlighted that the richest 10% globally are responsible for 50% 50, 50 of global CO2 emissions. So we also have a responsibility thinking about the impact of our graduates in the future. But also our students will be the world's future leaders. And so there's a huge opportunity here to influence their future decision making when they are in those positions of influence. And of course, global student numbers are growing. And so that makes it even more important that our education systems are fit for purpose and fit for generating graduates who can genuinely drive a more sustainable future. So I'm sure we're all very familiar with the, the drive to address employability in designing our curriculum to ensure, rightly so, that our students can find good jobs that they want. But isn't it equally important that as Jonathan Porritt here says, that we prepare students for the work of the world and not just the world of work. So we have responsibility, I would say, and there is also urgency. We are living in a climate emergency, and it's been interesting to see how the language about climate change has changed from climate change to talking of a climate emergency. We only have a very few years to fundamentally shift all of our systems away from a largely fossil fuel based economy. We see a pressure from society growing for real 
and just action in this area. But also our media is full of the stories of the impacts of climate change happening today. And at the moment we have about 1.1, 1.2 degrees Celsius increase in global temperature above pre-industrial times. And these are the impacts that we are seeing with just that level of temperature increase. So images from Malaysia from flooding in December, images from the Middle East where warming is twice the global average. And we see real heat extremes and impacts on not just human health, but also the energy system as well. We see in the bottom a cold station in Canada where people can go to cool down in extreme heat. And we've seen images from around the world, including the UK, of wildfires and the impacts that that has on our economy, on our health, as well as our ecology. But we often concentrate on the immediate threats, and don't necessarily see those larger threats that lie behind that. Climate change, but also biodiversity collapse. And all of these things are interrelated. So our natural systems are impacted by climate change. We're seeing, you know, 98% of coral reefs are predicted to have, um, well, rates of decline with the warming trends that we see. But also the heartening thing is that natural systems are part of the solution if we let them. But of course, sustainability and what we should be tackling through our education systems isn't just about climate change or biodiversity. It's about our inefficient resource use and extraction and waste. It's about the social inequalities within countries and between countries. It's about food poverty at different scales. And the bottom right for me, so one of our problems is actually our lack of visions of what a sustainable future looks like. And the fact that so many of our cultural visions of the future are dystopias rather than seeing, a, seeing something positive that we can drive towards. When I started sort of this work, trying to sort of embed sustainability first in what I did and then the, the wider university, there was always challenges in terms of um, really trying to articulate what is meant by the breadth of sustainability or sustainable development, which I unapologetically am just going to use interchangeably here. In 2015, things got a bit easier with the United Nations ratification of the Sustainable Development Goals. These 17 goals, which for me just highlight the breadth of what we mean by sustainability and make those conversations a lot easier and mean it's much easier to take it past people thinking we're talking about recycling. However, how these sustainable development goals are presented for me isn't always that helpful because it seems to sort of suggest that these goals are, you know, sim they're, they're single boxes isolated from other issues. And for me, the sustainable development goals are at their most powerful when we think about the interactions between them and really concentrating on those spaces between the different um, sustainable development goals is where I actually think a lot of our focus needs to be. So just a quick word in terms of when I'm sort of working, whether it's staff or, or with students around sustainability and sort of trying to introduce this as a, as a concept, um, I've learned not to talk about definitions because if you ask a student to give a definition of sustainable development, they scratch their heads and they try and remember the classic Brundtland definition. A much more powerful way I find is to start with images to give a set of images for um, the learners to, to choose from that for them articulate sustainability or unsustainability and to use that as a way to start conversations and help to give people confidence that they do know something about this area and 
to allow them to start to, to explore confidently in conversation their understandings of sustainability and understanding that there are different perspectives. And for me, in the Sustainable Development Goals, um, the most important goal has to be quality education, what we're talking about today. And within that, there is one target, um, 4.7, and that underpins all of the goals, as well as obviously what I'm talking about, which is all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development. So this is something that underpins all of the goals. Now, I just want to take a little step back and think about timescales, because as I sort of said, um, that some of the, the, the impacts um, or some of the, these large sort of questions feel very far away. And when we talk about um, climate projections, often we're talking about uh, 2100, where we think, well, what, what happens after that? Um, and 2100 seems a long time away. Um, in the UK, we have a, a target of net zero by 2050. Even 2050 seems a long time away. And if the, things seem far away, it's harder to act now. So let's see if we can bring these timescales a bit closer by thinking about our students. So let's say our first year students will start their careers in 2025. They will work for maybe 40 years. That means that they're going to be retiring in 2065. So their whole career is going to take us through this transition to net zero. But then many of our students will have children. So their children might start their careers after this 2050 marker that we have. And they might find themselves retiring in 2100. So as educators now, or as parents, we are gonna indirectly influence those who are alive at the end of this century. So this 2100 is really not that far away from us. So our students will make this transition happen and they will live with, it, with the impacts. And so we are really in this critical decade for action. So I would say we have a moral responsibility for work in this area, but it is not just about our moral responsibility. We can also look to student demand itself. So this is um, research carried out by um, Students Organising for Sustainability, which used to be the sustainability branch of the National Union for Students. And they've carried out research for over 10 years now across the UK um, around um, students. Um, it's framed around um, skills. And in this survey, there are questions about sustainability. The research has consistently shown high demand that our institutions should actively incorporate and promote sustainable development. 91% of students saying that um, in the 2020-21 survey. 84% of students were saying they would like to see sustainable development actively incorporated and promoted through all courses, emphasis there on the all. And 66% saying sustainable development is something that they would like to learn about. So they're identifying as the, this as an area that they already see as important for, for them. But it's not just whether student demand, there is also demand from um, employers. And actually we've seen this demand for over 10 years now with uh, leaders saying that they need these leadership skills for the transition to a sustainable economy. And lots of reports now coming out saying sustainability skills are in high demand. Lots of talk about green jobs. But for me, that's not always helpful because every job needs to be a green job. If I just look at um, our work at Keele University, um, our heads of catering, our heads of procurement, our heads of events and conferences are all driving the sustainability agenda. 
they didn't start their careers thinking about sustainability, but they have had to reskill and retrain in order to adapt to this changing world. And that is true for all jobs. And we have a responsibility to ensure that our students are fit to take this transition into their careers, whatever they are. Nor is sustainability a separate agenda. And I have had so many conversations where the, the sort of the feeling is, oh, sustainability is just something else that we need to add in along with all of these, another, um, these other agendas. Education for sustainable development is, is, a, is an overarching pedagogy, but it is also highly connected with all of these other agendas that we are used to working with in our education institutions. And I really think a useful place for, um, for potentially people to, to start thinking about embedding of, of sustainability is thinking about the connections to what is already being done, maybe in these other areas. And so we need to ensure that sustainability isn't a new thing in its own right, or just a new thing in its own right, that we try to ensure that it is embedded into every other element that we are developing within our curricula and beyond. So it's easy to despair sometimes of the, the, the lack of, of progress, but actually the, there is um, a lot of progress in, in the sector and we've seen huge changes in the last um, couple of years. Um, living and working in, in England, south of the border, I always look north of, of the border with, with jealousy um, in terms of there is real progress um, in, in Scotland and fantastic sustainability um, networks. And I'm sure that um, you know, these networks can, can be extended into that wider Harriet Watt family as well. But I think for, for me, what's really um, heartening is that we see some of the more conservative um, sort of small C players um, in the higher education sector really starting to grapple with this agenda. Universities UK are now stepping up and taking leadership in this area. And today and tomorrow have um, um, uh, conferences around universities and climate action. But we also see UKRI now firmly engaging with the environmental sustainability agenda. We see the Department for Education um, finally starting to develop a strategy about sustainability and climate change. So this for me feels that there is real change happening when these are the, the, the bodies which are starting to engage with this agenda. A number of years ago, I was at a, a higher, edu uh, higher education um, uh, conference um, and I responded, uh, sorry, I, I asked a question in a talk and as part of that said about my role as a director of education for sustainability. And that time I was really um, um, sort of put down by other people in the audience who were saying that universities should not be doing this sort of, of work and trying to promote and embed sustainability. I'm glad to say that these times have changed. And we see a lot of um, good guidance, good support being developed by these sector bodies. For example, the QAA and Advance um, HE um, published um, the, their second guidance. The first one was in 2014, but in March of last year, an updated guidance on education for sustainable development, which is really useful in terms of um, really trying to sort of articulate definitions, um, and, and sort of frameworks across the whole sector. So within this guidance, if we just look at those last three bullet points, they talk about um, education for sustainability being about supporting students and staff to develop the knowledge, competencies and ability to pursue sustainable visions of the future. So it's not just about knowledge, it's about competencies, it's about ability, and it's seeing those future visions. It's also about supporting students and staff to appreciate the complexity of our world, the wicked problems that continuously emerge 
and how they can personally and professionally contribute to positive change. So thinking about our responsibility, thinking about what is the end point? What are we trying to, to do with our students? What sort of people should they be when they graduate? How can we influence that so that they can contribute to positive change, both personally and professionally? And finally, about challenging, supporting and enabling students and staff to co-design solutions and drive change for sustainability. So this emphasis on solutions and this emphasis on empowering um, our students and also empowering our staff because we all have spheres of influence in which we can drive change. So the, this guidance um, really um, drives um, or discusses a, a, a competency um, approach to education for sustainable development. And it draws on um, UNESCO work articulating eight different competencies for um, education for sustainable development. Now, these actually, I don't think are still that user friendly, but it highlights the need for our, uh, our students to be able to think in systems, systems ways, for systems thinking to be at the heart of this, to be able to think about consequences and interrelationships between different areas. It's about anticipatory or futures thinking competencies to be able to vision a sustainable future. It's about critical thinking competencies. I remember early days of talking about education for sustainable development and people sort of thinking that this, you know, that this is not about critical thinking. This is about promoting a particular political orthodoxy, but actually, at its heart, ESD is about critical thinking. It's about critical thinking of the systems that we live in and do not necessarily critically think about. It's about our students developing strategic competencies to be able to strategize solutions. It's about working collaboratively. It's about problem solving in integrated ways. It's about developing self-awareness, understanding their own positionality. In terms of normative competencies, it's about understanding different world views and working with those different world views. However, if we just talk about competencies or skills or, or attributes in a generic way, we probably miss some of the impact that we want to, to have in terms of education for sustainability. And so I would really sort of say that these competencies do need to be clearly based within a clear context of sustainability, which does need knowledge development alongside. I also very much um, like to talk about a whole institution approach to education for sustainable development. Our students don't just learn in the formal curriculum. They also learn from the co-curriculum opportunities that are offered to them in their places of study. But they also learn from the environment in which they learn and study and live. Um, and that is what we can refer to as the hidden curriculum or the subliminal curriculum. What are they learning from the fabric of the buildings, the infrastructures, the way things are done within the organisation? And I would very much encourage thinking about a holistic approach to education for sustainable development. It's very easy to, to sort of concentrate on, say, on um, thinking about what is it that we already do. And there's sometimes talk of, of mapping um, our curriculum um, about what, what we are already covering. The problem about that is it doesn't necessarily drive change unless we clearly identify those gaps and try to fill those gaps. So we did some work at Keele, um, good probably six years ago now, looking at um, student perceptions of different aspects of sustainability, sort of a global citizen aspect, an environmental protection aspect, social justice. 
And we, we kind of subdivided the, the students depending on their broad discipline and fields, whether in arts and humanities, health, natural sciences or, or social sciences. And as these, um, this graph sort of hopefully shows, it shows that our students aren't always seeing the relevance of all aspects of sustainability. So, for example, our health students aren't seeing the impact um, of, um, or they're not seeing the relevance of environmental protection and stewardship. But there's a huge environmental impact of the NHS and surely our health students should be learning about that and learning what that means for, for care and treatment and prevent, for preventative medicine. Similarly, our, our arts and humanities students are not seeing those links and yet the arts and humanities have such an important role to play in terms of transitioning society to a more sustainable future. And so I think it's really important to, to, to identify the, the gaps and ensure that our students have a genuine holistic understanding of the relevance of their, their disciplines to the breadth of sustainability. Okay, I'm now sort of from that those generic um, sort of um, comments, just gonna take um, some time to talk about some of the work um, done at Keel, um, which might sort of be, be helpful in terms of thinking about, about different approaches. So for us, I think um, our journey probably um, started um, sort of full throttle in 2008, when our university council committed to a deep green path um, and saying, yes, this is something that we want to, to, do, to do right and seriously and integrate it into everything. And that led us to take part in um, a, a whole institution change programme called Green Academy, um, which allowed us to take a cross university team to, um, to really think about um, how we can look at whole institution change, including the curriculum, but not just that. One of the key things that came out of that is identifying the need for, for dedicated resource. But more than that, dedicated time and a title for someone to take the leadership um, in this. So I've actually held the role since 2012 as Director of Education for Sustainability, with a remit for embedding sustainability in the curriculum and the wider student experience. When I wrote my job title all of those years ago and the job description, I really wanted to put that wider student experience into that rather than just focusing on the curriculum because our students do learn from much more than just the curriculum. And we need to think about that whole institution piece. For me, it, it's, the important thing was having a person with a title to give legitimacy to start to drive those conversations with other academics. I also think it was important that the person in that role was an academic themselves who had that first hand knowledge of the pressures and the challenges of curriculum design and delivery. And so you know, for, I think that has been quite transformational in terms of or the, just saying that the, the university was committed to, to this um, because they have made this role. Also important to us was in 2015, you know, one of our six strategic aims was to embed sustainability in all that we do and education and everything else was part of, of that. So the, the approach that I have taken in trying to lead this area for the university hasn't been to say, here's a big expensive flagship project that we put lots of energy and resource into and runs for maybe a couple of years, but we can't keep that up. My approach has been to keep an ear to the ground, to try and get myself into decision-making committee meetings where I can see how sustainability can be built into new initiatives. 
I like to think of setting off these different Trojan mice around the university into different areas of activity, different disciplines, which leave little droppings which can fertilise the seeds and mean that people all around the university drive their own activity. And so much of our education for sustainability activity, it's not driven centrally, it's driven by individuals working in their own sphere of influence, in their own discipline, or in careers, or employability, in our study abroad opportunities. And I see my role is trying to just facilitate conversations to help people feel empowered to drive ideas that they have in this area and to bring that personal interest that many have in sustainability into their professional lives. And for me, a key element of that is also trying to, be in, trying to ensure that we have high level communication about the importance of sustainability to the university. And again, that helps empower people feel that they can drive their ideas forward and that there will be support for them. And ultimately, we try to take a really collaborative um, approach and to support people who want to develop work in this area. We have an Education for Sustainable Development strategy. I have to admit, it's actually now two years out of date. But what it highlights is our approach which isn't just looking at the curriculum. Yes, that is a key part of it, um, with the goals of ensuring that um, sustainability is embedded in all of our programmes. And at last count, we reckon 98% of our programmes embedded sustainability, but it could still be done better. But it's providing other opportunities, for electives for students who want to go deeper into this. But it's also looking about um, at postgraduate taught, postgraduate research, co-curriculum opportunities, working with the students' union. It's around staff development. It's about external engagement, things like this. It's about communication to create that culture. It's linking with our estates and fostering a two-way relationship to leverage the opportunities for education that our estates provide. It's about linking to research. It's about thinking about ed promoting education for sustainability research. It's about getting the governance right and ensuring monitoring and evaluation to understand our impact, not just to say this is our impact, but to think about how we can do things better. These are some images of some of the activity um, at Kiel. So a few years ago, we provided we, we produced a, a guide of some of the modules from different disciplines across the university, from chemistry to criminology, that embed sustainability. Our Sustainability House um, is a project started by students about 12 years ago who lobbied the university to, to be able to live more sustainably on campus. And every year, four new students live in that house uh, as exemplars of sustainable student living and they, they try to encourage other students into living more sustainably. We're very lucky we have a very large solar farm on our campus but we make sure we make the opportunities for students to understand that. We've supported our students developing food growing um, opportunities, um, getting funding for a polytunnel, we run a module on greening business relevant to all students because sustainability is relevant to all business and all jobs. And a whole range of other activities as well. In terms of some examples of, of disciplines, and we have some fantastic work done in, in chemistry. So I believe this week our second year chemistry students start off by um, a, a quiz of looking at the, the um, chemical chemical formula of different personal care products, but then go on to, to research what are the sustainability implications of these care products. Our computer science students have been involved in app development for our Green Keel work. Our physiotherapy students developed presentation skills in the context of learning about sustainability in the NHS. 
Our music students have created sound logos for our way to go shop. Our life science students have to think about the sustainability implications of their research projects that they'll do in their final year. And our geology staff, initially actually quite resistant to embedding sustainability, have now mapped their whole curriculum against the sustainable development goals and it's integrated throughout. For me, it's important to appreciate that education does not sit in a silo within our universities and we should be leveraging ESD opportunities in other domains, working across the campus, outreach and partnerships and research as well. So I'm going to finish before we move on to uh, some time for, for questions with a call to action. So sustainability is not just an environmental issue. It's social, it's economic causes which underpin these issues. Social and economic impacts are also prominent and they will also be the solution. So we need to move away from thinking about this as an environmental issue. It's been one of the most unhelpful ways of framing these issues, I think. Sustainability is not a political ideology. It is not distant from us in time, nor is it distant from us in space. And I would say addressing sustainability through education is a moral necessity. It is urgent. It is complex. It is fast moving. It is an exciting area to work in. It is linked to the other educational agendas we are already engaged in. And I would say it is our responsibility as educators. So what does this mean? It means we should, as individuals, inform ourselves, be willing to change, collaborate, think about our role and responsibility. We should question ourselves and what we do and why we do it. In our teaching, we should focus on solutions, embed action and activism, seek to empower, and we should not just tinker around the edges. As researchers and scholars, we should make our research accessible. We should work with our local communities. And as institutions, we should change governance and strategy, and we should strive to be the leaders that we say we are. And ultimately, we need to make it everybody's responsibility. And with that, I'm just gonna finish with one of my favorite quotations, saying the science demands it, the evidence is before you, we must start at once. There is no time to lose. With that, thank you very much for listening.